Hello everyone. In today's video we are going to talk about 10 things you must do after installing Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS. Myself Muhammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, just like any operating system or any Linux distributions, there are some things that we must perform in order to get the best out of our Linux distribution and same goes for our Ubuntu servers. So I'll show you 10 such things that will increase your productivity and obviously it will also increase the optimal performance of your Ubuntu server 22.04. So let's see what are those 10 things. Number one, update. Well, this is the first thing that you must perform no matter what, because there are some packages that needs to be updated so that your system can have optimal performance. And for that purpose, we just have to use simple commands. The first command is sudo apt space update. And after that, hit enter. Give it your password, hit enter once again, and it will log if there are any packages that needs to be updated and upgraded. I have already done that so you might not see any package. And here you can see I only have 3 packages that can be upgraded. So when you are done with the update, use another command to upgrade all those packages that needs an upgrade. So I'll use the same command but I'll write upgrade at the end of it. Instead of update, hit enter. Now what it will do? It will upgrade all those packages. I am done with this one and now my system will have all the updates installed and now I'll have optimal performance. Let me clear my terminal and let's move ahead. On number two, we have enable auto updates. Well, it's a good practice to update our system every now and then. But what if you forget about it? Then there are chances that you might miss some of the security patches or some of the latest packages from your Ubuntu that might help you to keep your server secure. In that circumstances or in that type of case, we can enable the auto updates. So whenever there is a new update from the official repository, those updates will be installed on their own. So for that purpose, what we need to do, we need to use some of the commands. And the command is sudo space apt space install space unattended hyphen upgrades. This command will install all the updates on their own and you do not have to worry about anything. After that, use another command in here as dpkg hyphen reconfigure space hyphen hyphen priority equals low, give it a space and write here unattended hyphen upgrades. And after that, you just need to hit enter and you are good to go. Here it says this must be run as root. So I'll use the same command, but I'll use sudo at the start of it. And now if I hit enter, here it is asking for the configuration. Go with the yes option and hit enter. And you are good to go. Now let me clear my terminal and let's move on to the next one. Number three, disk partitioning. As we know that we have different partitions in our Linux distributions and our Linux servers, we cannot make more than four. But let's see first of all that how many partitions do we have? So I'll write here lsblk or a list block, hit enter. At the moment, I have two disks as sda and sr0. In sda, I have three partitions as sda1, sda2 and sda3. What you should do? You should make more partitions so that you can keep your data separately in different partitions. And this will also help you to organize your data in more sophisticated way. If you see, in my sda2, we have boot. And what I can do, I can make SDA4 and I can keep or I can use that to save my other data in it. So how can we make more partitions? Well, for that purpose, we have a command as sudo space fdisk space slash dev or that stands for devices slash your disk name. In my case, I'm going to use SDA. Hit enter. Here it is asking what do you want to do? Basically, we want to create a new partition. So I'll press N hit enter. Now, if you do not know what first sector is, just hit enter, just hit enter for the last sector once again. And here you can see it has created a new partition with the size of 107 kilobytes. 
Now, in order to write these changes onto your disk, press W, hit enter and you are out of it. Let's clear our terminal and let's use the same command as lsblk and hit enter. Now you can see we have another partition as SDA4 and its size is 107.5 kilobytes. What you can do? You can also create a partition with a particular size as per your liking. Now let's clear our terminal and let's move on to the next one. Number 4. Firewall Well, it is always a better thing to have a firewall in our Ubuntu server. Although Linux distributions and Linux servers are considered secure well enough, but still, it is better to have an extra layer of security. So for that purpose, we can consider to have a firewall. I'm talking about UFW or Ubuntu firewall. I'll write here sudo apt install space UFW hit enter. Well, you will see Ubuntu firewall as pre-installed in your Ubuntu. But if you are using any other version of Ubuntu server, you might have to install it. Although in Ubuntu 22.04, you still have to enable it. Well, the command to enable your firewall is sudo space ufw space enable and after that hit enter. This command will enable your firewall and it says firewall is active and enabled on system startup. Now let's see the status of it. So I'll write here status at the end of it, hit enter, it says active. It means our firewall is up and working. Number five, allow SSH through ufw firewall. Well, before you enable the firewall on your system, you should also consider to make sure that SSH is allowed. Otherwise, the traffic through your SSH service might get blocked out of your system if you are trying to access your system remotely. So for that purpose, what you need to do, you need to add SSH in your firewall rule. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make sure that SSH is allowed through my firewall. Command for that is sudo space ufw space allow space ssh hit enter it says rules added now any traffic that comes through ssh either it is from ipv4 or ipv6 it will be allowed through my ufw and my firewall will not block it now let's clear our terminal and let's move on to the next one number six disable banner display in ssh well one of the very common way that attacker use and they use to compromise your server or your system is through different bugs in the software that runs on your services. And Banner can display such information about what type of version of OpenSSH or the operating system you are running. So there is no sense in giving such information to the bad guys or perpetrators. So what we can do, we can disable our banner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write here sudo space echo space inverted commas and inside that i'll write here debian banner space no and outside of it i'll use arrow keys space slash hc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config dot d again forward slash and write here 10 hyphen my hyphen sshd hyphen settings dot conf hit enter okay here it says permission denied why is that so well this is because we are not allowed to have write permission for this particular file what i'm going to do now i'm going to change the permission for my directory so what i'll do i'll write here ch mod space 700 space and here i'll have the file name so i'll write here etc slash ssh slash ssh d underscore config dot d slash and i'll hit enter now it says operation not permitted okay i have to use sudo along with it now i'll hit enter and now we are good to go let me clear my terminal and now we'll add our argument into that particular file and now i'll use this command in order to add the argument of my banner into this particular file after that you just need to hit enter and you are good to go number seven create a non sudo user well, it is not considered a good practice as a Linux server user to use the Linux distribution as root user all the time and because it has high chances of your system getting hacked or compromised. So make sure not to use your system as root user, especially when you are online and make sure to use your system as a non root user as much as possible. So for that purpose, what we can do, we can create a new user in our system and we can use our server as that user. 
the command for that is sudo space add user space name your user anything i'll name it as user1 hit enter now give it password for your new user hit enter retype your password hit enter once again here you can have your further information about the user i'll write here zubair room number can be anything then it is asking for the work phone just hit enter leave it if you want to leave your home phone hit enter again again hit enter or you can write all this information as per your liking from here it is asking about the confirmation as is this information correct yes it is correct press y hit enter if you do not know what you should do as you can see that y is in capital it means this is the default value or your answer should be this and if you want to override the default settings you can go with no as you can see no in small letter we are good to go now let me clear my terminal and let's move on to the next one number 8 add the user to sudo's group well as we have just created a new user with the name of user1 now this user will not be able to do anything for example if i write here su user1 or su user1 hit enter i will have its password now i'm using my system as user1 and now let's try to do something if i write here sudo space apt space update hit enter i'll have my password it says user1 is not in the sudo's file it means yes we have successfully created our user but we have not assigned any privileges to this particular user what means there is no use of this user being into our system so for that purpose we have to assign all the privileges to this particular user so i'll go back and i'll log in back as my zubair user i'll have my password and now with the help of my zubair user i'll assign privileges to my user1 so for that purpose we have a command as user mod space hyphen a capital g give it a space and write here sudo space user1 and hit enter it says permission denied okay we have to use sudo for this command hit enter now and we have successfully added our user1 into sudo's list now let's go back and let's try to use su space user1 hit enter password hit enter so i'll write here sudo apt update hit enter have your password hit enter once again and now it is working you do not have to log in back so now you can see that we have successfully added our user into sudo's group and it is working pretty fine without any problem let me clear my terminal and we are good to go number 9 no passwords throughout the servers well we have different authorization processes with public and private keys and there are many chances that our passwords can be hacked easily so for that purpose we can make sure that no user uses the password to access the server instead they should use the hash value because if any of the user gets compromised the whole server can be vulnerable to hackers so we'll go to the directory as sudo space nano space slash etc slash ssh ssh d underscore config and hit enter in this particular file you see we have different information first of all we have port number what you can do you can disable this port number because we know that our system will use port number 22 for the communication so for that purpose we can change the port number i am going to have 100 So now any communication with the server needs to be on port number 100 and you can communicate it through your community or among the users who are onto your server and now you will have an extra layer of security after that under it it says address family as any uncomment this line and what i want to do i want to only make it for ipv4 so i'll write here i n e t and now only ipv4 traffic will be allowed again come down and from here it says permit root login as prohibited password so what i'm going to do i'm going to write here no because i'm going to disable password and i do not want anyone to use password on to this particular server so i'll write here no and i will uncomment this line as well after that we have to look for a line that says password authentication here it says public key authentication scroll down and you will see password authentication as well here it is I'll just uncomment this line and I'll write here no. And now we are good to go and no one will be able or allowed to use password onto my server. Everyone should use SSH key instead of having their password. Now to get out of this press control x press y to save changes and hit enter. And now we need to restart our SSH service so that the changes can take place. Command for that is sudo systemctl space restart 
give it a space and write sshd sshd is daemon service that is why we have d hit enter and we are good to go number 10 allow data from your port only well as you have seen in the previous step that we had a port number as 100 so what i'm going to do now i'll use a command as sudo space ss space hyphen tupln as t-u-p-l-n and hit enter and now here if you see we have different ports as udp and tcp and if you see at the bottom the tcp under the local address port we have port number as 100 and this was the exact port number that we added into the file so now what i'm going to do now i'm going to allow this port through my firewall so that traffic through this port should be allowed onto my server the command for that is sudo space ufw space allow space port number which is 100 in my case and now hit enter and as you can see the port or the rule has been added into my firewall and now again make sure to enable your firewall if it is not already after that hit enter and we are good to go let me clear my terminal and these were the 10 things that you should do after installing your ubuntu server 22.04 at the end i'll talk to you about one more thing and that is you should perform security audits and it's a bonus tip and it will spot any security loopholes that you might have missed earlier to do this we can use linus which is an open source software that can perform security audits penetration testing compliance testing vulnerability detection system hardening etc now the question is how can we use linus well first of all we have to install the linus by cloning its github repository and it will also ensure that we are going to download and use latest version of it. So I'll write the command in here and you can follow it. I have cleared my terminal and now I'll write the command. After that hit enter and it is cloning into the repository. Or in case if you do not want to do this or if you want to download your Linus directly, you can cancel this process, clear terminal and use the command as sudo space apt space install space linus and hit enter and it will download it for you we are done i have already downloaded it and now it's time to start the audit system so i'll write here linus space audit space system and hit enter and it will do the rest of the things on its own and you do not have to worry about anything as you can see it is detecting the operating system then it is checking different things and it will audit everything in your server at the end you can have report on your hand so these are different things that you should perform or you can perform on your ubuntu server to make sure that your server perform optimally and you can have the best performance and your server remain safe so i'm sure that you must have learned a lot of new things and you must have liked watching this video if that is the case please leave a like subscribe and press the bell icon i'll get back to you in the next video till then take care